Cyprus. Sea, sand, and long days in the sun. And for thousands of loved up Brits, it's one of the top places to get married abroad. But organizing a wedding. Some flowers are missing. Is never plain sailing. Nothing goes wrong. <laughs> so helping them with the biggest day of their lives. Breathe, breathe. Are the British wedding planners. You've got to multitask and you've got to be prepared to get your hands dirty. Let's do it, let's get set up. Prime to bring order out of chaos. You can't drive down there. You can't make it because of the trees. And hopefully provide the perfect start. I wouldn't change anything. It's been absolutely perfect. To their future lives together. Today, a couple get a nagging feeling about their transport. Yeah, if something goes wrong with a horse and carriage, then I don't know, I don't know what we'll do. A floating venue inspection. Needs a bit of... TLC. TLC, yeah. <laughs> I've spotted this. And... It ain't raining. Yeah. Yes. A wedding planner tries to weather the storm. Right, watch the puddles, guys. <laughs> With Cyprus a popular choice for British couples choosing to marry abroad, a typical overseas wedding normally sees around 30 guests invited. Someone who's used to dealing with every size of wedding, from hundreds of invitees to a handful, is 55-year-old planner Angela Bence. Every single wedding is different and I'm very emotional because that person's had contact with me and I finally see the bride and groom tying the knot. But she doesn't let her emotions get in the way of organising the perfect day. I eat, sleep, drink weddings because I get great satisfaction of seeing the brides happy. Arriving in Prataris on the east coast of the island are her next soon-to-be newlyweds. 22-year-old electrician John Paul and 40-year-old Lisa, a catering assistant, both from Middlesbrough. Good evening. With Lisa's daughter Chloe, aged 13. Over the moon, we're here, plenty of saving. We're just glad to be here so we can have some time to chill out as a family together. Lisa and JP have been together nearly two years. Well, we met at a fitness camp and she asked if I had a partner. They were the boxer size and we just got on really well from there. Thanks very much. Right, cheers, thank, thank you very, you very much. Thank you. There's a big age gap. I'm soon to be 23. And I'm soon to be 41. And like, the age gap there just, just does not bother us in the slightest, does it? At first it did. <laughs> they picked a five-star hotel for their wedding and have a budget of £9,000. Champagne in there, isn't it? Very nice champagne. Lisa and JP are having a small wedding with Chloe, their one and only guest. I think it's quite unique just being the three of us. It feels a bit more special and we feel a bit more relaxed with it just being us. The total cost of the wedding plus the holiday, I think it's probably in the region of about nine grand. When you think there's only the three of us, you think it's a bit like excessive, but when it's our day, we only once in a lifetime thing, so if we've wanted something, we've got it. They most certainly have. From horse drawn carriage to classic car to white doves. And they've booked it all themselves. Even though we've got a wedding planner, we've done a lot of booking direct. I'd like to be in control. Problem is, so does planner Angela. When couples organise their own weddings, it makes my life ten times harder. Dealing with their suppliers, which I may not even know, having to put everything into a time schedule actually gives me one big headache. With Lisa and JP's DIY wedding less than a week away, Morning. Morning. This is Carol, who's working with us as well. Angela's organised a meeting with a couple to check on their plans. So you've got one child and two adults. Yeah. What are you doing on flowers? I've already got my own. You've got your own. Not a problem. So you've got the horse and carriage. Yeah, we've got a, the Buford car going from here, horse and carriage from here. The beach. To the beach. You've got the doves as well. Yeah, I've got the doves, yeah. The couple have booked doves to be released in memory of Lisa's mum, Joan, who passed away a few years ago. On the day with the doves, what we'll do is the plaque that you have on the ceremony table, we will put it by the bird cage so that we can get that in the shots for you as well because yeah. we know it's special to you. 
All right, you'd be fine, honey buns. After planning such a personal wedding, Angela wants to know if JP and Lisa have confirmed all their bookings. With the suppliers that you've used, have you actually done any transfers of money or anything with them yet? No, I've done separate envelopes and written the amount. Lisa and John Paul have brought money with them. Sometimes the brides feel more confident with this because they know everything is budgeted for, it's in an envelope, they're not going to spend that money. At least if they use cards, they have got the insurance. Without insurance or deposits, Lisa and JP have no guarantees that everything will turn up. And with four days to go, it's a big worry. Just panicking a bit. Yeah, but if there's not paying a deposit, I feel like nothing at all is finalised. Getting married Friday afternoon and now it's like paid for. The wedding could end up being a DIY disaster. With its sunny climate and stunning scenery, Cyprus is home to over 60,000 Brits. Among them, 45-year-old wedding planner Joe Hayworth, who left the British winter for the Cyprus sun 16 years ago. It scares me a lot to think that I arrived here all those years ago and I'm still here. On the day, you're going to go, wow. She's been running her Paphos-based company. Ladies! Ladies, for the everyone shot, please. Helping couples get hitched for the last six years. No matter how much experience you've got as a wedding planner, things can go wrong. Everybody, please, the bride is melting. I am holding their dream in my hands, and that's what spurs me through. Happy days. Bringing their dreams to Paya in the southwest coast of Cyprus, Our planner Joe's next bride and groom. 27-year-old Natasha, who works for the Environment Agency, and IT analyst Mark, who's 34. Shall we go and have a see what's inside? With their children, eight-year-old Oliver and Lily, who's three. Come on, Lil. There you go. Go and have a look. See what you think. Wow. We've never been before up to Cyprus, have we? Nope. First time. Don't even know what made us choose it, actually. They've booked a wedding in the Payer Town Hall Gardens, followed by a reception at a traditional local restaurant to fit their budget of £4,000. What's in this one? Yeah, oh, it's a big one! Uh, you can see the stage! Oh, oh my goodness, look at that! After five years together, Mark decided to pop the question. Tasha doesn't like surprises. She knew what was coming, she knew when it was coming, she'd figured everything out. I couldn't go and buy a ring and hope that she'd like it. <laughs> she had to pick it before I popped the question. So it was always in the pipeline, but it's still got to be done on her terms. She planned the look of the reception on her own terms too. Tasha loves the artsy, crafty stuff. The only thing she doesn't realise is travel. So then you've got to try and get all those artsy, crafty bits into the cases and then hope that I can carry them all through the airport. Yeah. <laughs> They've just about got it all here, and today Joe and colleague Kat are checking it out. See, at least it doesn't look very heavy. Let's have a look. Wedding decor check. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Weighs a ton. <laughs> Joe's taking them to look around their reception venue for the first time. It's a bit of a scary moment when a bride turns up and she's got a big suitcase with her. When they bring things to hang, things to make that can take a long time, this is when it can become a little bit tricky. In you go, with the old suitcase. Can't wait to see what's in there. Get your wedding goggles on and think of it as your blank canvas for us to, to do exactly what we've planned. Yeah. Is it as you... Uh, better. Is it? Yeah, it's loads oh, better. That's yeah. great. Yeah, yes. it's very rustic, isn't it? It's beautiful. True. It is a blank canvas that Joe usually has to fill in. But bride Natasha has her own ideas. This is our favourite bit as yeah. wedding planners. <laughs> We're like, oh. this is our bit that we love. <laughs> Sprinkling oh. the magic. Ah, OK, let's go. pull it over Ooh. a bit. <laughs> All right. It's like Christmas. Play. 
OK, talk me through what you've got, then. We've got the box of confetti. Perfect. Um, in here, there's just two glasses for me and Mark. For you both, yeah. Mr yeah. and Mrs. There are favours, vases, handmade paper flower bunches... How gorgeous. Yeah. ..and hearts to hang. Wow, look at you. Quite crafty. Oh, I've got these. I don't know if they're going to stand up, though. Oh, a flower's fallen out. We'll not bother with them. If you want them, we can easily fix that. It's so. a, a tea for Tash and an and. The, and the M doesn't really look like an M anymore. Let's have a look. I think maybe we could trim. Yeah. yeah. Leave it to us. OK, thank you. With Natasha's carefully prepared decorations damaged in transit, the pressure's now on Joe to make sure everything can be fixed on time. When uh, I, I first saw the case appear, I was like, no. OMG. If I had what was supposed to be brought, and yeah. it was only supposed to be favours yeah. and a couple of signs, and then when we see the suitcase, I know, I'm thinking... But it's oh, always no. the, the dreaded suitcase. Yeah. <laughs> Not as bad as it looked. No, Definitely not. It was Definitely it's good. Not. We said to the, the wedding planners, you know, it's, if you can't fix it, don't worry, it'll be fine. But I'm really hoping they pull the stops out because Tasha's put a lot of effort into that sort of stuff and it'll make her day knowing that that effort's not going to waste. On the east coast of Cyprus in Prataris, Lisa and JP are getting married in one of the hotels where Angela is the on-site wedding planner. But they've done most of the organising themselves. We've took like, a lot of work from Angela. We're paying for a lot ourselves. This is the envelopes that Lisa's sorted out. It's, it says on the front how much is in it, who it's for. What it's for. And what it's for. We've got, like, one for the wedding video. Horse and carriage, the Buford car, the ceremony, and money for the doves. Most of the contractors haven't even asked for a deposit. And with only a couple of days to go, JP and Lisa are getting twitchy. It feels like nothing's booked because we've still got all this here and. Nothing's like, paid for. Like over £3,000 just sat there, do you know what I mean? It puts you on a bit on edge. The one we're most nervous about is the horse and carriage. Yeah, if something goes wrong with a horse and carriage, then I don't know, I don't know what we'll do. Coming up, tears ahead of the big day. Well, I've got a bit of conjunctivitis in one eye, so I've been crying for five days straight. And nerves ahead of the ceremony. Mum's feeling hot and stressed. I've still got all these envelopes and I've only got given two out. On the east coast in Prataris, planner Angela is organising Lisa and JP's DIY wedding with just one guest, the bride's daughter, Chloe. It's the day of the ceremony and they're feeling the pressure. Mum's feeling hot and stressed. And now it's been paid yet, we've got all these like money envelopes in our room just laying around. It still feels like nothing's confirmed because I've still got all these envelopes and I've only got given two out. We're waiting to see what happens, really. Sadly, Lisa's mum, Joan, passed away a few years ago from cancer, aged just 54. With her mother not able to give her away, Lisa's asked planner Angela to step in. With Lisa and JP, I haven't had that much preparations to do, but today I'm actually walking Lisa down the aisle she asked me if I'd do this because she said she'd feel a little bit more confident instead of walking down on her own, which I do believe is a great honour. However, playing such a big role has put pressure on planner Angela. She's travelling over from working on another wedding on the opposite side of the island. I left Paphos this morning and it's a two-hour drive down to Pataras to get back for Li Lisa and JP's wedding. I literally had 20 minutes to grab a shower, reapply some makeup and make myself look presentable. But despite the rush, 
there's a risk she may not make the wedding on time. I'm quite concerned because it is a bank holiday and there's a lot of traffic. If Angela doesn't beat the busy roads, bride Lisa will have to walk down the aisle alone on the biggest day of her life. Paphos is the mythical birthplace of Aphrodite, the Greek goddess of love. And over 1,200 weddings happen in the town every year. Among the planners based here is Stella Verdi, who works with her daughter, Sherry. Here's to weddings. They're always looking for new ways to stay ahead of the competition. We need to keep up with the trends. What people are going to be yeah. wanting next year. We need to get ready for it. Today, Stella's been invited to view a new venue by Natalie, an events coordinator at a luxury hotel that's over 40 miles away in Limassol. I don't normally do weddings in Limassol, simply because I'm quite busy. I'm a very small business. It's me and a couple of helpers. And for me to do a wedding in Limassol, it's just further afield. It's just, you know, I just, I didn't even think about doing them actually until Natalie persuaded me to come and view. She'll only take on a venue if she's happy it offers everything she needs. Good service, a really good view, um, food must be good. The rooms should be nice and big and comfortable with lots of space. Well, this hotel will have to be pretty special for me to put it on my books because it will involve so much more extra work, travel and time. So let's see. I want to sell places that show how beautiful Cyprus is. I don't want a place that's busy and people are walking in front of your wedding. I want like places that offer a degree of privacy to couples getting married. Stella's a businesswoman who clearly knows what she wants. But hotel coordinator Natalie is up for the challenge. Stella's coming down today um, so I can show her the hotel. Um, she's based in Paphos, but I'm here to try and persuade her to come to Limassol. Stella does have high standards, but I think, I think we can accommodate her. <laughs> welcome to Limassol. Nice to see you. Thank you for it's coming. Nice. No, you're welcome. Wow, come in and take a look around. Thank you. Keen to get going, Stella starts with checking out the rooms. Hey, so welcome to our presidential suite. I was expecting something not so modern, to be honest. It's renovated this year, so it's a, a, a new style that they've done. It's nice and spacious, obviously. You've got the lovely sea marina view, which actually is 90% of our rooms have a sea view. Would every wedding couple get petals? Or... Every wedding couple would get champagne, they'd get fruits, chocolates, the rose petals on the beds. Oh, it is. It's very soft, isn't it? I'll tell you what I'm thinking. <laughs> I mean, you probably just melt in this bed. There you go. And the idea is not to melt in the honeymoon bed, is it? And then we have our newly renovated bathroom as well. Oh, wow. No toilet door, though. There is a toilet door. Is there a toilet door? Yeah. <laughs> I know, obviously, we don't have a divide here. No, no but this but... is what we've got. OK, I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to... I'll just have a quick peek. So, very nice. Yes, and there is a door. There is a door, yeah. We're very happy. We have a toilet door. Is this bath big enough for two? Not if I get in it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not just about the bedrooms. There's still plenty more to check out before she decides whether to add the venue to her books. I think Natalie really wants me to like it, and um, so far, I do. But it's not in Paphos. I have to see the venues really close up. That's important before I make my final decision. It's the morning of Mark and Natasha's wedding. This is my wedding look, guys. <laughs> Organised by planner Joe, the ceremony's in the Payer Town Hall Gardens, followed by a reception in a traditional local restaurant. Joe is in her office trying to fix the bride's handcrafted decorations that were damaged on the flight over. I'm really looking forward to seeing if Joe's managed to pull off the fixing of my decorations. I spent a long time making them. No pressure then. The flower was missing was here uh, and it was a little bit misshapen. It had been squashed a lot in, in transit. Anyway, we fluffed it out a little bit and we've uh, just glued it back down and reshaped it so you wouldn't notice until I'd actually pointed it out. We won't tell anyone, Joe. 
At the villa where the wedding party is staying, conversation between bride Natasha and her bridesmaid Kaylee has turned to the groom. Are you excited to see him? Yeah. Do you think he'll scrub up well in his suit? Yeah, he'll look much better. Better than he does in his uh, football kit. I know, yeah. <laughs> I kept telling him if he doesn't cry, he's going to get in trouble. Oh, I think he will cry. They always say that though, men, don't they? Oh, I'm not going to cry. And then as soon as they see you, they turn around and the worst of us. <laughs> but leaving his hotel, groom Mark is worried he might be dabbing his eyes for another reason. Well, I've got a bit of conjunctivitis in one eye, so I've been crying for five days straight. Um, so there'll probably be a few tears when I see Tash later, but I'm expecting that, so uh, I've got the tissues on standby. Hello, boys. Hi, Bob. I believe I'm supposed to be. The bus taking the guests to the ceremony is on its way. And best man Sandy's got some last-minute advice for groom Mark. When Tasha's coming down the aisle, can't look to the last minute. When you do, if you're not crying, put yourself in the eye. <laughs> but planner Joe is worried about a very different kind of water. The forecast was looking very grim for today, so we've had to put a few plan B's into place. Plan B for the reception would mean moving everything, including all of Natasha's handcrafted decorations, inside the restaurant. The ceremony is being held at Payer Town Hall Gardens, where Joe and her assistant Kat are making the final touches. We need to put the buttonholes on when they come. Yeah. Make sure the pins are all in. Yeah, they're all good. We did have a plan B in action, but I don't believe we're going to need it. Looking at these beautiful blue skies, brimming with confidence. It's going to be a fantastic day, and I'm absolutely 99.9% .9 that this weather is here to stay. Her. Hope she doesn't live to regret those words. All good to go. All right. All we need now is some guests. <laughs> <laughs> the bus is packed with guests, and groom Mark has arrived at the ceremony venue. Hi, everybody. You okay? I felt like <laughs> you okay? Yeah, you. Yeah. Are you feeling a bit, a bit the old da -da 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 butterflies yeah. on the go? A little bit. Oh, I love it. <laughs> my right hand man today. The bride's only just arrived and the groom's already in tears. <laughs> got something in your eye? I've got conjunctivitis. Oh, have you? I woke up this morning couldn't open my eye. Oh, my God. It's just constantly leaking. Nightmare. But it looks like Mark won't be the only one with a little something in his eye. I look fab, look at me! <laughs> <laughs> Bride Natasha is ready to be walked down the aisle by her dad. Think about, like, sausages and eggs, <laughs> I love that moment, I really do. Seeing the dress and seeing the emotion. She's off to get married. It's lovely. Joe can only hope the sunny weather holds and the wedding stays dry. Coming up... Nervous, no. Fears at one wedding. Yeah. Of course, just panicking over, sweating. Oh, don't worry, you can't see a thing. Yeah. And tears at another. <laughs> Told you you'd cried. You <laughs> cried, you cried. Taurus, anxious groom JP is waiting for his bride to be Lisa. I just hope everything goes to plan. You know, we've not been certain things haven't been paid. I just, just obviously people turning up on time. JP and Lisa have organised virtually everything themselves, and their five-star hotel wedding is due to start in ten minutes, with no sign of the doves or the horse and carriage. Time is running out. Nervous, no. Nervous, yeah. Impost, just panicking over, sweating. Oh, don't worry, you can't see a thing. Yeah. No, you can't see a thing. JP isn't the only member of the wedding party hot and bothered. I've driven two hours from one end of the island to the other. 
Angela's main job today is to give away nervous bride Lisa. And with the bank holiday traffic, it's been touch and go whether she'd make it on time. I'm now pulling up. I'm at the hotel for Lisa and John Paul's wedding. And all I can say is, let action begin. And with minutes to spare, it's not just Angela who's turned up. Finally, JP can pay someone. That's ticked off our list and paid for. So it's been written out for God knows how many months. Oh, bless it. Time to rock and roll. Take it nice and steady. Bride Lisa's on her way, on the arm of planner Angela. Wait for me. <laughs> you know what, you're all right. Look forward. I. John Paul Stone. John Paul Stone. Accept. Accept. Lisa Michelle Kirby. Lisa Michelle Kirby. As my lawful wife. As my lawful wife. Until death do us part. Till death do us part. I. Lisa Michelle Kirby. Lisa Michelle Kirby. Accept. <laughs> Accept. John Paul Stone. John Paul Stone. As my lawful husband. As my lawful husband. Till death do us part. You may relax now. As from this moment, I pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss your bright now. The moment's come to honor Lisa's mum, Joan. I'm very proud of Lisa at that moment. She's done so well to hold back the tears. All three of them just letting go at the same time. And they looked stunning. Ceremony over, and after worrying all week, JP and Lisa's carriage has finally arrived. Oh, I'm off. See you later. But Angela's got a nagging feeling about the situation. When couples book animals with weddings, it's a great risk because anything can happen. It is bank holiday weekend this weekend. Traffic is going to be horrendous on the road. God forbid him, what happens if a car hits the horse? The bride and groom are bolted out of the carriage. He is hoping nothing goes wrong. In Limassol, Planner Stella is checking out a hotel as a possible new wedding venue. But it's 40 miles from her usual base, so coordinator Natalie may have a job persuading her. Natalie, you know what you don't see much anymore, these sort of verandas? You don't, actually. No, you don't. They're safe. <laughs> of course <laughs> they are. <laughs> Stella will only take on the venue if she's convinced the views, food, and ceremony locations meet her exacting standards. Definitely more going on in Limassol than Puffles, isn't there? Perhaps a look at one of the hotel's seaside venues might sway her view. I've set up a little ceremony just so you can get a, a little idea of how we can set things up. OK. So we can either have the bride walk in this way, where we've just walked now, OK, or we can have her come through the restaurant and she can come out this way and we actually clear these tables. I think it's just a venue that will not appeal to everyone. It, there's a select few that would like that because it's obviously joined on to a little bit of a cafe, restaurant, bar near the marina. But um, I think for small weddings that want to be right by the sea, perfect location, very beautiful. Despite Stella's initial doubts, the hotel's venue appears to be slowly winning her over. Next on the tour is a garden location with an ancient olive tree as its main selling feature. We usually do the ceremony facing this way. So obviously the bride will walk down this way. This will be her aisle to come up here. And we have it all set up. And so it's all facing, facing the sea. The chef has um, this amazing round barbecue that he brings out. So it's all live cooking. It's lovely. That's another one on the list of requests. Barbecue's a big one, isn't it? We want a barbecue yep. on the beach. That's well, we're pretty much there. We're pretty much there. No, I like it. It's gorgeous, Natalie. The hotel's venue seemed to have piqued Stella's interest, 
Now to taste the food. So this is some examples of some of the canapes that we can offer for the cocktail receptions. So um, we've got obviously fish options, meat options, vegetarian options. So we can do a little bit of everything. Mmm, delicious, thank you. <laughs> I love the Captain's Terrace. I think that's probably one of my favourite venues. Beautiful panoramic views and the cocktails were amazing. Oh, that's nice. Thanks for taking the time to show me round. Oh, well, I do hope you can bring some weddings to Limassol now. Well, I think so, I think so. I mean, it is really beautiful. Looks like Stella's found a new hotel venue to add to her books. I'm really glad I made the effort to come, because it is, it's quite beautiful here. I didn't really want to spend an hour in the car each way coming to Limassol, but with a venue like this, I think it's worth it. It's gorgeous. Who wouldn't want to get married with a backdrop like this? It's, it's beautiful. I don't know what's in this cocktail, but... <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, thank you for coming. You're welcome. In Peer, Joe has planned Natasha and Mark's big day. Now, they're about to get married. The bride arrives... ..and so do the tears. Back now. I can't read it, my eyes watering. Cheers, <laughs> <laughs> cheers. I call upon all persons here present to witness that I, Mark Watkinson, accept you, Natasha Bowen, as my lawful spouse throughout our life until death do separate us. I told you you'd cry. You cried, you cried. <laughs> <laughs> I, Natasha Bowen, accept you, Mark Watkinson, as my lawful spouse, to love and share with you happiness and unhappiness throughout life until death do us part. I pronounce you man and wife. Now make kiss your wife. <laughs> As the confetti flutters to the ground, Joe's colleague Kat is driving to the reception venue to set up Bride Natasha's carefully handcrafted decorations. Madness now, we've got about an hour to set up the reception, so we're driving up here now. Take us a good 20 minutes to get up there. Got all the tables to do, still got the name cards, favours, bits and bobs to put out, so I'm gonna go full steam ahead. The big day's on track, but that could all change if the forecast turns out to be right. With over 400 miles of coastline, Cyprus is a boat cruising paradise. Make sure it's tied on tight because of the wind. And one woman who knows all about them is 54-year-old planner Sharon Mazura. I moved to Cyprus, we had a small yacht. My friend called me to say that she was uh, getting married in Paphos Town Hall. Can I do the reception on the yacht? So then, of course, I thought, well, why not? You know, it's nice, it's somewhere different. Sharon's now been coordinating these special yacht weddings and receptions for over two decades. She's now planning to add a bijou boat to her fleet to offer a different type of wedding. What we're finding is that there is a little niche in the market for the smaller, intimate weddings and to be able to stay over as well. And I want to be able to offer to those very special, intimate weddings. Today, she's taking a look at the newly renovated boat to make sure it's up to spec. I need to check the rooms, I need to check what facilities we have on board, because on a small yacht, an intimate yacht, it is a little bit playing with inches. And if you don't have the logistics and all in order, then your wedding's finished. Sharon's husband, George, has been doing the work to the boat. Now he's brought the vessel down to Paphos Harbour. So off we go. How Plus many people there. can it sleep? Six. Oh, it can sleep six. Plus crew. Which on these intimate weddings is really good. 
because Easy. all six could go. That's the bug over there. What the bug of the ocean fly here. Hmm? Wow. It is beautiful. Their new yacht may look the part, but in comparison to the other boats, it's a fraction of the size. So, shall we go on board? Sharon needs to work out how they would organize a wedding on board. So, what do you think, Sharon? With the intimate weddings, they only normally have, like, a, a best man and a best woman. That's all. They don't have bridesmaids and things. So, we could have the best man here, the best lady here, and then if there's mum and dads or something, mm -hmm. they can watch it. It's like watching in the gallery. It's lovely. The new look cruiser is certainly tickling Sharon's fancy. Next, working out how to do the food. This is the little galley. Yeah, compact, but... Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the main dinner, yeah. this one could be used for the cannabis and the open sandwiches. Yeah. But for the dinner, it could be outside, eight or ten yeah, of them. Yeah, you're right. We can put a nice table outside. We, without any yeah. disturbance. But for this boat to work financially, Sharon needs to be able to offer honeymoon packages. So the bedrooms are critical. So shall we go and venture down to see yeah, come on. for the honeymoon night? So what do you think, Sharon? Little bits are missing that we need to do. I mean, I've spotted this. Need a new mirror here. Absolutely, definitely need a new mirror here. Sharon spotted a few snags. Will she be happy with the rest of the boat? These little bits are the things that matter to me. Over in Prataris, Lisa and JP have tied the knot at their hotel wedding. They're on their horse and carriage ride, but it's a bank holiday, and planner Angela is worried about busy traffic. Have fun, enjoy. All right, see you later. Here's hoping nothing goes wrong. But before long... The busy roads start to make it far from the idyllic ride they had in mind. It was a bit scary. There was loads of traffic behind us. And everyone was beeping their horns past us. Thankfully, they all arrived back for dinner in one piece. The waiter's here and I'm going to take you down for your evening meal. Go enjoy, all right? Thank Have some you. quality time and behave yourself. Having Lisa and John Paul's wedding was a little bit unusual for me because I'm used to doing everything. But they pulled it off. Well done to them. Didn't think I'd pull it all together, but I'm quite proud of myself that I have. And the day's been absolutely amazing. Everything went perfect in the end. Just all been worth it. Have fun! Oh. Coming up... Oh, it's bigger than what I thought, actually. There's inspiration... And I can just picture, though, the decoration, the flowers, the chocolates. Go, 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 go! And perspiration. We're on plan B now. We just don't want to take the chance, really. So we're just moving everything inside. Bride and groom Natasha and Mark have just married in a traditionally Cypriot venue in Peya. And luckily, despite the forecast, it didn't rain. <laughs> While planner Joe organises the photos, colleague Kat has only an hour to dress the reception venue, using all the decorations bride Natasha's brought from home. Now we just have to place everything out, put the favours and the name cards out. Natasha has spent weeks crafting a special, personal look for the wedding. She's asked us to hang them all on the trees. One important decoration that didn't look quite right was Natasha's flower-covered letters, damaged en route from the UK, which fell to Planner Joe to fix. Much better. Yeah. Safe, can't you? No, they look really good now. Yeah. She's going to be very happy with them. 
but it's nice for the brides because they can put a bit of their own stamp on things and also bring, bring a bit of what they like into it. With so much invested in the decorations by Natasha, the planners can only hope the bride and groom approve of the final display. And they don't have long to wait to find out. Look at your vases, they look Do brilliant, like yeah. Have you seen all the little things in the trees that I made? There's some there and there's some more there. They look fab, don't they? And you made that as well. I did. Thank you so much for fixing it. We look good now, yeah, it looks eh? Fab, you can yeah. really see it now. Yeah. Tiny little bit of a trim. You yeah. did all the hard work. Oh, thank you. Looks good, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, looks fab, yeah. <laughs> The kids are enjoying the games. Ah. And everyone's tucking into the ice cream and drinks. And to top it all off, it ain't raining. <laughs> Yet. Spoke too soon. <laughs> At Paphos Harbour, Planner Sharon is casting a critical eye over her fleet's newest boat with husband George. She wants to see if the renovation is up to scratch to offer boutique wedding packages. So for the honeymoon suite? Yeah. Let's have a look. This one. Wow. Oh, it's bigger than what I thought, actually. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I thought it was going to be like smaller. Suites. Yeah, so is that the ensuite in there? Yeah. Lots of drawers for them for a couple of nights' stay. Mm -hmm. A few little finishing touches immediately that I've found, like little bits of the carpet that needs changing. But I can just picture, though, the decoration, the flowers, the chocolates. But Sharon won't give it the full seal of approval till she's seen every inch. Most people are a little bit more agile than me, but however... Finally, for the pièce de résistance, the top deck. I'm going to change this yeah. for some beds. Really? Yeah. Oh, no, because look at the front. Look. Yeah, OK, we've this got a bit of some mainly... bed in the area. This, a... th this is lovely. Mm-hmm. Bride and groom to sit here, look. You know what? Look at the view. There's just so much going for it. Well done. Thank you. Well Thank you. done. Thank you. Fantastic. I do try my best. There's a few little things, just little pieces. I need a new mirror, need a little bit of carpet and a few little holes, so they'll get those sorted. However, it's definitely a wow factor. It's amazing. It's a proper VIP yacht. We're going to be able to offer something that we cannot offer before, a more affordable honeymoon. A mixed honeymoon where they get some time in the hotel, some time on the yacht, and that's what we need. We need something luxurious, but for small intimate weddings. And now we have the lot. In Paya at Mark and Natasha's reception, the weather's taken a dramatic turn for the worse. With heavy rain on the way, planner Joe and her assistant are quickly moving the tables and their decorations inside. Go, 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 go. As the happy couple head off for their photos. We're on plan B now and we've felt a few specks of rain. We just don't want to take the chance, really, that we see it everybody and then the heavens open. So we're just moving everything inside. Joe and her team had an hour to decorate the venue earlier. Now they could just have minutes to reset up before it starts to pour. It's definitely spitting now. All hands on deck. It's the last few bits. A few spits of rain turns into a downpour. Just as the newlyweds return. <laughs> Come on. Right, watch the puddles, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give up for your bride and groom, Mr and Mrs Watkinson. It's supposed to be good luck, isn't it? <laughs> Judging by the amount of rain we've had, we've got years of good luck. And the rain doesn't stop the reception getting into full swing.
Who goes to Cyprus and gets married in the rain? We do. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still the greatest day of our lives. Beautiful the venue when we got here, wasn't it? it was even, even the things that Tash had made that we weren't sure whether they could repair, the damage that had happened in, in transit, they fixed a lot, they found a place for them. And even when everything got moved because of the weather, they still found a place. Yeah. They're all tucked away inside. Plan B always works, especially with us. Yes, always. <laughs>